Hello and thank you for taking time out of your day today to do, have a look at um, one of the latest series of videos I've done and this one relates to setting up a soft starter and, and the one that I want to focus on is the 3RW30. So that's the basic soft starter in the Siemens range. So on this next slide it just gives you a bit of an idea for um, the schematic of the product, um, how it's actually designed and, and the terminal layout and as you can see on the front of the device here you've got a pictorial and, uh, and, and basically what that indicates is that it's a, it's a two phase control device because um, you've got two hybrid elements, one on each phase and then you've got a straight through connection on the, on the middle phase. So on a, on a hybrid device you always have these two anti-parallel thyristors and a mechanical bypass but there's two different options you can either have a two-phase control device and that would mean there'd only be two phases that are controlled by the hybrid element or you could have three-phase control and that would mean all the phases have the anti-parallel resistors and the mechanical bypass contact integrated but why would you choose a two-phase device over a, a three-phase well the two-phase device is actually the most cost-effective solution and also if you have um, a requirement for space saving inside of your control cabinet then the two-phase device may be the better option um, but to be honest with you that typically doesn't dictate uh, whether you use a two-phase or a three-phase control soft starter um, because say for example we class a standard load as say perhaps being a pump or a conveyor now a two-phase control device might be suitable for those type of applications but when you go to say for example a lathe or a crusher or a big circular saw then that would typically um, take up um, it's more of an odious load so you couldn't use a two-phase control device for that because um, it's that that audius of a load it would create a phase imbalance um, and it would cause damage to the motor windings um, but essentially for this application we're going to assume that it's say going to be a pump application so as you can see from the terminal layout you've got this this T1 across the top and, and T9 so this is your three phase in and your three phases going out this one that's labeled number two is for your control voltage terminal one is for the input signal so for the soft starter to actually turn on and off the control voltage has to be initiated but at the same time terminal one also has to be um, activated also and then we also have an open and closed contact on number 13 and number 14 and the two pots which you have to configure on the front of the device are, as you can see here you've got number seven number seven is the time that it takes for the voltage to reach the full line voltage and you can just about make it out on that pictorial you can select from zero seconds right the way up to 20 seconds and then on this final pot on number eight um, this is actually the pedestal voltage commonly known as the startup voltage so say for example the typical voltage in the UK is 400 volts and you set that to that pot to 50% it would initiate the voltage at 200 volts and based on what you've set this pot to it would take X amount of time from that 200 volts to reach the full line voltage of say 400 volts So on the next slide, um, this just gives you a view of a typical um, soft starter layout. So firstly, let's take a, a little glance at this, this main circuit. So you've got your three phase supply coming in um, on this particular device. It's assumed that you would, would use a motor starter protector. Um, so a motor starter protector would be um, something that has integrated short circuit protection and it also has thermal overloading as well so that thermal overload will protect the cables 
and it'll also protect the motor from op- overheating as the 3RW30 doesn't have um, an overload functionality in it. So a typical configuration if you was trying to achieve type 1 coordination would be by using a motor starter protector. Say for example if you wanted to achieve a higher degree of short circuit protection like type 2 you would typically have a fuse combination and um, to be able to protect the soft starter itself from damage so type 1 protects the system and the motor and the person and the machine but type 2 coordination protects the machine the person and the motor but it also protects the soft starter as well so where that really becomes of benefit is, say for example, if you had a 315 kilowatt um, soft starter, which cost £5,000 on the outlay, the chances are that in the event of a short circuit, you're going to want to be able to um, not have to replace that device. So you'd opt for type 2 coordination. Yet, if you was going for um, a 5.5 kilowatt device, which um, would typically cost around say a hundred pounds then you would perhaps consider using type 1 coordination because the fusing would probably cost more than the actual soft starter itself and on this diagram on the left hand side you can see here this is just an explanation of the uh, of the control circuit and, and and how it would typically operate so as I mentioned on the slide previously um, what you'd have is you'd have um, a connection going in and out of the A1 and the A2 terminals. So that's the, the control signal. And further to that, you would also need an input signal um, going into the soft starter on terminal one. So to get the soft starter to initiate, you'd need the control voltage on A1 and A2. And you'd also need a signal um, on terminal one for the soft starter to actually start now on this configuration what, what we're showing here is that once the motor is started through S1 what will happen is the start signal will initiate the start and the, and the motor will start to turn that is actually a momentary um, switch so once that is unpressed this switch here can act as a latch. Uh, so until the motor stop signal on S4 has been pressed, the motor will carry on running. But you can also use this terminal 13 and 14 for an upstream um, contactor, which you wish to uh, drop out. So that pretty much gives us a, an idea as to the general operation of the soft starter but how do you actually come up with the parameters for the actual soft starter so previously I've, I've gone into a demonstration on how to select a soft starter and and I would recommend if you've not seen it already to go and have a look at the Siemens STS tool so it's the simulation tool for soft starters so if you go into the calculator you can see here you can input information in terms of the environment the motor and the supply and then it'll give you an array of soft starters which are suitable for your application but what we're really interested in to set the device up is to know um, the actual application parameters and there's a tab in the calculator called application parameters so here you have the option to turn this current limitation function off and you can actually play and toggle around with the starting voltage which is one of the pots on the front of the 3RW30 and the ramp up time to get a feel for what you need to set those starting parameters to before you've even bought the device. So the idea is that once you've bought the device you can set the pot, the starting voltage to say 70% and you can set the ramp up time to three seconds and then you can rest assured that you know that that selection is going to work based on the simulation which you've run in the Siemens STS tool. Now another great feature of the device is that or of this simulation tool is that once you've selected 
a device that you're happy with, it will then give you um, a commission, a recommended commissioning process. And you can get that by clicking on report, giving it a project name, and also deciding on whether you want feeder mains components. Now, I mentioned earlier that that's a soft starter. It can have an integrated overload or you can have a soft starter without an integrated overload. Now, in the case of the 3RW30, it doesn't have an integrated overload. Um, it's, it's a fairly low kilowatt size. It's 5.5 kilowatt, the device that we've selected. So we could probably get away with their type one coordination. And the reason why we'd go with type one coordination is that the, it offers you a motor starter protector and a motor starter protector has short circuit and it has an overload integrated into the unit. So once you click on generate report here, it will then provide you a suggested um, short circuit protection. So let's just have a little look now at the generated report. So as you can see here, it gives you an array of information in terms of all your input data. But what we're actually interested in here is the commissioning profile. So as you can see, based on the information which we've put in terms of um, toggling around with the parameters, the application parameters here, it's suggested that we start the voltage at 70% and we give it a, a ramp up time of four seconds. It suggests an optional line contactor that isn't required. Um, you might require it if, say, for example, you were using a standard soft starter integrated into a safety circuit. And as you can see here, it even suggests the type of motor starter protector that you'd want to use, which covers you for your overload and also for your short circuit protection. And finally, here it gives you um, an explanation of the data accuracy of, 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 the, of the product which you've put forward. So it's really quick now and it's really easy to be able to gain an understanding of what parameters you need to set the 3RW32 by using the tools which are, which are there at your disposal and free of charge. So the Siemens STS tool doesn't cost a penny you can download it free of charge from our technical support site so if you haven't seen my video already in relation to the Siemens STS tool and selecting a soft starter please feel free to um, go through my guided guided video thanks very much for watching and I hope you found the video useful